Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Rampant Design Tools, and today we're talking about 4K style mats inside of Premiere Pro. Now I know when you take a look at elements like this, your immediate thought is, you know what, I really should go to After Effects to do all this work. But the best part is, is that you can do all of the work that you need to do right from within your Premiere Pro timeline. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, well, track matting is the way that I would want to do this. But you know what? You're right. But what's important to keep in mind is that by using just a general track mat, you're actually not going to be able to accomplish what you want without a little bit of forward thinking. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so let's command and tab into Premiere Pro, obviously Alt and Tab for my Windows friends out there. I have a few style mats that I've already brought in here. And I'm going to give you three examples. Now the first example I'm going to give you is what I sort of mentioned in the intro about how you're not going to use style mats in the way that you might think that you're going to. Now in this first example, we're just going to take one clip and we're going to put it behind this entire element. Then what I'm going to do with the next couple of examples is we're going to get specific and start putting different images into the different boxes of the different style mats. Now what's important before I start out, I'm just going to right click on this clip. I'm going to come down and say reveal and finder. Is I just want to show you that these 4K style mats, if I come up to my movie inspector here, are actually in 4K. You'll see 3840 by 2160. What I'm going to do is just quit out of QuickTime. We'll come back in a premiere here. Now, I should point out that most people might watch this tutorial and think, well, Kev, you know what? I'm not working in 4K, so this product is really not for me. The best thing about these elements is just because they're in 4K doesn't mean you can't really use them in any project you happen to be working on. Let me show you what I mean. I have some clips in here that are actually DVC Pro HD. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new timeline with one of these clips, and we're going to work with this 4K element in that timeline. Let me show you what I mean, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take one of these clips, I'm going to drag and drop it into the timeline. Now the reason I'm doing that is so I can create a timeline that's based on the parameters of the clip that I'm dragging in there. What I'm going to do is just drag the sequence out here just so that it appears at the top. We'll call this style mat one. Okay. And let's go with sort of the common workflow to begin with. What we're going to do to begin with is I'm just going to take my element here. We want the whole element. I'm just going to drag it right down here on top of my shot. Now, obviously, for the purposes of what I'm doing, I don't necessarily really care how much of the shot is in here. But of course, depending on what you need to do is you could adjust the shot according to what you want to have exposed. Now, you'll see right now that what I have going on here is the style mat is actually way bigger than the frame itself. You'll see that if I actually zoom back a bit here and I come into the actual clip, you'll see if I come to the effects control, I click on motion. It's actually so big, I can't even see the edge of it. There we go. You'll see how big this element is in comparison to the frame. Well, again, like I said before, no problem. All I need to do is just simply shrink the element down here. Let's shrink it down. I think about 33.5 is pretty good. There we go. Perfect. Let's just fit my frame back here. Very nice. And again, most people think that a track mat is what you're going to want to use. So let's do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select my clip and let's navigate over to the effects tab here. I'm just going to type in track mat. There we go. You'll see track mat right here in the keen section. It's called the track mat key. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take that track mat key. I'm going to drag this right over here and I'm going to drop it onto my clip. Now, of course, we're not going to see anything happen because you'll see I can actually turn this off here. We haven't actually told the effect what we want it to do yet. I'm just going to turn that layer back on. So up here in my effects control window, we want to do a couple things. The first thing that we want to do is we don't want to composite using the alpha because there really is no alpha here. Everything that we're going to be doing is based on luminance. So of course, let's tell the effect that we'll composite using the matte luma. And as soon as I do, nothing has happened because I haven't told the effect what the actual layer is, what the matte layer is. And in this case, it's video layer two. So let's just switch here to be video layer two. And as soon as I do, there we go. Everything is essentially all set to go. I can just simply hit play on the keyboard. There we go, looking very nice. Give it a second here, it's gonna transition out. And the first thing that people think to themselves is, okay, well, you know what? I don't exactly have the part of the shot that I wanna use. Maybe, you know, we had something going on over here that I really wanna put in the middle of the uh, style mat. So what most people think is, okay, well, what I'll do is I'll just come to the motion tab here and I'm just gonna drag its position. The only problem is, is that as you can see, what's actually happened here is once I've applied that track mat, it's essentially locked it to this position in the frame and there's nothing that I can do to adjust it. And you're probably thinking, Kev, is, is there something that I can get in here like a little cheat to get in and tweak that? Believe it or not, there isn't. This is actually the way that the effect works. Well, that doesn't mean that I can't work around this limitation. Now, like I said, I wanted to show this first example to you because if we wanted to get in and just apply a clip to the style mat, guess what? Boom, here we go. Like I said, everything's all set to go. We could conceivably use this element in anything that we want to. 
Now, what I also want to point out is that by doing this track map, what we've actually done is make all of this out here, this black section here, is now actually keyable. What I can do is I can move this element up a layer. Now, as soon as I do, you're going to notice the track mats disappeared because you'll remember on my clip here, I told it that the mat layer was V2, but of course, as soon as we make that adjustment, it's not V2 anymore, it's now V3. And if I take a different clip here, I'll just grab anything, I'll just grab it and drag it in behind, you'll see that it's actually working as an actual mat. So that's very cool. You can actually get in and create some very cool looks like that. But in this case right now, I just want the effect to sit over top of black and I want to be able to get in and reposition the element itself. Now, what I'm going to do to do this is I'm going to use a different example here. I've got a different style mat here. And you'll see basically pretty straightforward. Two elements are going to come in, one position on the left, one position on the right. I'm going to want two different images in here in each frame to be revealed. So let's do this, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete everything that I have in my timeline here. And let's take, again, because this is already the size of the clips that I would be using, once I take the next style mat and drag it and drop it in here like such, I'm not going to want to change anything. I'm going to want to leave everything the way that it is. Okay. Now, most people think that I'm going to be going for this video clip next, but I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do here is I need to forward think a little bit. Now, I'm actually going to need four layers to achieve the look that I'm going to want to create. Now, why four layers? Well, one layer is going to be for the style mat itself. Two layers are going to be for the video because I'm going to have one video layer in here, one video layer in here. And the next layer that I'm going to need is a black solid. Now, you're probably thinking, well, why would you want a black solid? Well, let me show you. What I'm going to do, much like I did before, is I'm going to take the style mat, I'm going to position it right up here on the topmost layer. Now, of course, again, much like I did before, we're going to want to get in, we're going to want to adjust the scaling of this here. Now, of course, if you happen to be working in a 4K project, you wouldn't need to do any adjustments at all. You know, if it was a 2K project, you'd only have to go down, you know, half the size. Obviously, you want to get in and just tailor these to the type of footage you're working with. But that's what I like about the Rampant Design Tools elements is that they're so flexible. Like I said, you can work with them in any size project you might happen to be working on. Okay, so let's just take this layer, the style mat. We're going to move it up one more layer because I said I needed four layers to achieve this. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a black solid. Now, to do that is actually very simple. Most people immediately think I'm going to go into the title tool, but I actually don't need to do that. I'm going to come down to the Create New Item button, and all I'm going to do is simply say, give me some black video. It's going to ask me if I want to make it the same size as the current timeline. I'm going to say yes, and you can see that I actually already had one from before. So all I'm going to do is just delete that one. We'll take the black video here, drag it right down here, and drop it into V3. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do the exact same effect as we did before. We're going to create a track mat key again. This time we're going to apply it to the black video layer. Again, exactly the same as what we did before. We want to use the uh, compositing mode as being the matte luma and the matte layer is going to be video layer 4. Now as soon as I do that, everything disappears. So what's going on? Well, let me take a clip of video. Now, which one should I go with here? Why don't we go with, we'll go with a little bit of Vegas look here. We'll have sort of our crazy drive through. And then what we'll do is we'll sort of put the time lapse on the other side. So let's take the time lapse. and I'm just going to drag it down here onto V2. Now, as soon as I drag and drop it onto V2, you're immediately going to notice that we actually have the style mat reversed. So all I need to do is simply come back to the effects control, just reverse it. And now you can see that we almost have the look that we want. I can come in, I can hit play, but what's the difference this time? Well, the difference this time is that the track mat is attached to the black video, not to my clip. So what I can do now is I can now take this clip and adjust it however I want inside of the frame. Now, in this case, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to scale this down. Let's scale it down. I don't know, 50% will work. Uh, 500, 550, I think, is a bit too much. Let's scale this down to 50%, and I'm just going to reposition it over here. Yeah, it's a little bit too... Uh, no, you know what? I think we might be okay. Okay. There we go. There's the cutoff. I think we're actually looking pretty good. So I'm actually okay with this shot right here. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do for my next clip here is I'm just going to copy this clip. And I'm just going to paste it down onto the bottom most layer. And let's reposition it here. Okay, so essentially what we're doing is just creating the same look twice. Okay, kind of like that. Okay, now all I'm going to do is just select a different clip. We'll just select our driving clip. I'm just going to hold Option on the Mac, Alt on Windows. We're just going to drag and drop to replace that clip. And guess what we now have? We now have the style mat working exactly the way that we want. 
And of course, as you saw, I can reposition this clip. So for example, if I wanted to zoom in on this and crop it a little bit, I could easily do that. Why don't I just do that, okay? Let's just take this clip. I'm just gonna come in here. We'll just scale it up a little bit. I don't even need to crop it because remember what's happening is that this black solid is basically only being cut out right here and right here. Now, of course, I can reposition this shot wherever I want, obviously staying within the frame, just like that. You know what, why don't I just stick it back at 100 here? There we go, okay? Let's reposition this back up, much nicer. Let's come in, let's hit play, boom, there we go. And you can see that we now have independent control over both video images. So you can see, a little bit of forward thinking is gonna let you get in, take this black video layer, apply the style mat to that layer, do the track mat to that layer to cut it out. Now here's the big question. So what's gonna happen if I wanna put video in behind this? So let's, for example, we'll take all these layers here. Let's move it up like such. Of course, again, you'll remember, because my video layer of the style mat has changed, I need to get in and tell the effect that. So let's just say it's video five. Now you remember what I did before is I took that sunset and I dropped it in underneath. The problem is, is that because the style mat is cutting out the black video, it's making a hole right here and a hole right here, this is all still black. It's covering everything over. So how do we get around this and apply the proper composite over this video? Well, believe it or not, it's actually very straightforward. What we're gonna do is we're gonna copy the style mat and then I'm gonna nest these four layers together. I'm simply gonna right click and say nest. Okay, we could just call it nested sequence, that's fine. What I'm gonna do now is simply paste that style mat back on top here. Again, we're gonna go back to the same effect, that track mat effect. We're gonna say that, hold on a second, now let me just actually, let's just put this layer back so they're all matching each other. Of course, what we're gonna do again, much like we did before, is say, we're going to the Luma. The mat channel is, in this case, it's video three. You'll see that what we now have is the exact same effect but with the control to get in and reposition the elements in here however we want. So as you can see, a little bit of forward thinking, I can create complex composites that people would normally create in After Effects quickly and easily inside of Premiere Pro. Now there's one more example that I do want to show you. And I'm gonna use a little bit more of a complex style map for this one. Let's come here to my style mats, double click. We got a little bit of a I wouldn't say misshape, but we got a little bit of an interesting angle here that we're gonna to wanna to get around, and a simple crop is not gonna help us. So let's get in and let's create a style mat with this. And what we're gonna do again, much like I did before, is we're gonna put a style mat in each one of these different arrows here, okay? So again, we're just gonna take the element, we're gonna drag and drop it here, and we need three elements, which means if I got three elements, I'm gonna have three elements, the black solid and the style mat, so that's five layers. So let's put our style mat on the top. Of course, we don't wanna change the sequence settings. And let's take our black video, let's just drop it in right behind the style mat here. And let's just grab three shots here. Now, I don't know if these will be long enough. We can adjust the style mat, which is all good. That one's not even very long. Oh, actually, that, one, that clip's pretty long. And let's just take the Vegas time lapse here. There we go. Now, I don't know how these are all gonna line up. And now what we should do is we'll go with the shorter shots here and let's just speed our style mat up a little bit. Now you'll see that the shots here are about 11 seconds, 11 seconds and seven frames. So let's just come to our style mat here. I'm simply gonna right click on it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come down to speed duration and we're just gonna set the speed to be, I don't know, let's just set it to be, a, we'll say 1106. We'll just make it a little bit shorter here, okay? And we'll just line everything else up here. Okay, there we go, very nice. Okay, now again, much like we did before, we're gonna take our track mat, we're gonna apply it to the black video, okay? Simply double click, we're gonna come to the effects control. Now what's important to keep in mind here is that we actually want our style mat to be a little bit smaller. Here we go, okay, so 33.5. There we go, looking very nice, okay? Now again, much like we did before, the mat layer is gonna be video five. Our compositing use is gonna be Luma, just like such. Now, of course, it's looking right now at the topmost layer, which is the Vegas night time lapse. You'll see if I turn the layers off, we get all the different looks, okay? Now, it looks like I have two of the same shots in here, so I should have probably swapped that up. So let's just take, oh, I don't know. Let's take highway night time lapse here. We'll just drag and drop that in there, perfect. Now, it looks like that shot's not long enough. So we'll just take highway at sunset here. There we go, perfect, okay? Now what I should do here is I should actually swap this because I know that this is actually where the style mat's supposed to be. That's actually very good. I'm actually very happy with the way that this looks. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna reposition this so that I've got my Civic Center more centered 
inside of the arrow here. So let's just do that. Let's just adjust its position here. Let's make sure we're doing it to the right layer here. Just reposition that right to about there. Of course, as soon as I do, you can see that as I move over, I can see the layer below it. So let's get in and let's now crop this. Now, like I said, I'm not going to use crop to do this. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use another great effect located again inside of Keen. Let's just turn off track mat here. Come to effects. Let's come down to Keen. And I'm going to use the eight point garbage mat. All I'm going to do is simply drag and drop it onto my shot here. Let's just make sure we select the actual effect. And I'm just going to zoom back just a little bit here. We'll just zoom back to about 50%. And we're just going to reposition our garbage mat just like this. Okay. And you can see now that what I've done is create an irregular shaped mask, literally in a span of a couple of seconds. Now what we're going to do is with our Vegas Night Fisheye, I'm going to position that sort of over inside of this one here the right side. So let's just reposition that right to about there. I think that's looking pretty good. And because the edge of the frame, you'll see, is actually right there. It actually crops itself. And for the Vegas time lapse, I think we can just sort of find sort of a happy medium for this one here. Sort of position it right about, well, maybe we'll position it right about there again. That's kind of looking pretty good. Get a little bit of the road there. Cool. And guess what? Literally, in a span of a few clicks, let's just fit this back to the window here. We'll just deselect so we get a full frame playback. Take a look at that. I've created a more complex style mat, even with an irregular shaped mask, literally in a couple minutes inside of Premiere Pro. So if you have any questions, if you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them up on Twitter at Rampant Design or on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash rampant media. And don't forget, we have a whole bunch more tutorials and you can check out our entire product line at rampantdesigntools.com.